Welcome to section 6 of the parasites. This is our overview figure showing the parasites you need to know for step 1. In this lecture, we will be talking about the next CNS protozoa, Trypanosoma brucei, gambiens, and rhodesiens. Each of these three cause African trypanosomiasis, or African sleeping sickness. Our story takes place in an African area where a paramilitary group has kidnapped some children. You can see the trees back here common to many areas in the continent of Africa. This African theme represents African trypanosomiasis. Now the military group has labeled this road Prison Road to help guide their comrades who are bringing captives to their jail. Rode stands for rhodesians, as in Trypanosoma rhodesians. Trypanosoma rhodesians is one of the three species that can cause African trypanosomiasis, so rode for rhodesians. Here are several of the prison guards. They like to gamble in their spare time. They even have a sign to designate this area for gambling. Gambling sounds like gambians, as in Trypanosoma gambians, another species causing African trypanosomiasis. Now let's bring on our hero. Bruce Lee. Look at him here, ready to fight for the release of the imprisoned children. Bruce Lee sounds like Brucey, as in Trypanosoma Brucey. It looks like Bruce Lee arrived just in time because right now the guards are releasing all these teeny flies on the children to bite them. This is a cruel torture to be bitten by so many tiny flies. These teeny flies represent tsetse flies. These tsetse flies carry Trypanosoma brucei, rhodesians, and gambians. So when they bite, they can transmit African trypanosomiasis. So again, teeny flies for tsetse flies. Look at these poor victims of the teeny flies. They are all bitten up and have those big red ulcers on their bodies. These ulcers represent the ulcers that bite wounds can create after a tsetse fly attack. Now look at this cool lamp hanging here. The heating nature of the lamp represents fever. And you can also see these assorted gems hanging from the fancy lamp. We like to use gems to represent antigens. This varied assortment of gems represents antigenic assortment. And due to the antigenic assortment created by Trypanosoma species, the fevers can go away, but then return later. So Trypanosoma causes antigenic variation, which leads to relapsing fevers over several months. If you look back here on the road, you can see that Bruce Lee has already had his way and beaten this guy up. He's now holding his head in agony. This represents the headaches associated associated with African trypanosomiasis. Before Bruce Lee attacked him, this guy was trying to radio his gambling friends to warn them. Bruce Lee just smashed up the radio as well. Now we can see that the radio is just emitting these garbled, unintelligible noises. This refers to the slurred speech that infected patients often demonstrate. So garbled radio for slurred speech. Now look at this innocent fisherman. He's just trying to make a living and he happens to see these imprisoned children. I'm sure if given the chance, he would hop out and try to help Bruce Lee free these children. Anyways, he's got himself a fishing net. That net represents the lymphatics and the enlarged lymph nodes that the infection can cause. Again, this is caused by all three of the species, Brucey, Gambians, and Rhodesians. Now look at this other guy with this super cool afro. Bruce Lee knocked him out. Sticking out of his afro, he has this awesome comb. That comb and afro are so cool. It's too bad he's one of the bad guys in this story. Anyways, comb sounds like coma, which is one of the results of African trypanosomiasis. This brings up another important point. African trypanosomiasis is also sometimes called African sleeping sickness because it can lead to a coma. Back here, we can see that the guards have digged a shallow grave for any of their victims that pass away. There's some bones in this pit. Tragic. This represents the fact that the infection often leads to death. As a recap, patients can get fevers and headaches and have enlarged lymph nodes. Ultimately, the CNS may be penetrated, so the patient can develop slurred speech, fall into a coma, and ultimately die. To help you remember the CNS penetration, we've included hats on most of the guards in this image. We typically use hats to represent meningitis because hats cover the head just like the meninges cover the brain. In this instance though, the hats refer generically to CNS penetration, and this CNS penetration makes this a very dangerous disease. Now all the garbled noise emitting from the broken radio has startled all the goats up here on the hill. You can see these startled goats tripping all over themselves down the mountain. These tripping goats represent tripomastigotes, which are transmitted by the tsetse flies. It's one of the stages of the parasite. So tripping goats for tripomastigotes. Trypomastigotes are important to remember for African trypanosomiasis because they can be seen on peripheral blood smear, which is the way the disease is diagnosed. To help you remember this, we have included this gruesome part of the story. See this goat has tripped all the way down to this razor sharp fence, and the process has lost its head in the most literal sense. Now we can see the tripping goat sitting in a pool of its own blood. Now this is a peripheral blood smear showing several trypomastigotes in a patient with African trypanosomiasis. Recognizing trypomastigotes like the one seen in this image is fairly important, so commit this to memory. So again, tripping goat in blood stands for diagnosing by identifying trypomastigotes on peripheral blood smear. Now this guard right here went out to get some syrup for the rest of the gambling guards so they could enjoy a nice break with pancakes and syrup. I guess he didn't realize Bruce Lee was in town kicking butt. And as you can see, this guy just got kicked in the back of the head, causing him to spill all his syrup. 
If you look closely at the bottles, you can see they are shaped like a man. This man is the mascot of this particular syrup company. Anyways, this syrup man represents suramin, an effective treatment for African trypanosomiasis. For examination purposes and for your future career as an excellent physician, the only pathogens suramin is used to treat are the trypanosoma species in this image, trypanosoma brucei, gambiens, and rhodesians. So if you ever see this medication, suramin, think of African trypanosomiasis. One of the guard's favorite drinks is Mellow Yellow. These guards like to stay fully stocked on this drink. Unfortunately, Bruce Lee won't let them enjoy Mellow Yellow or Syrup. When the syrup carrier was kicked in the neck by our hero, the table of Mellow Yellow cans was knocked all over and spilled everywhere. These rolling cans of Mellow Yellow represent Malarsoprol, or Mellow Yellow Rolling, so Malarsoprol. Malarsoprol is another good treatment for African trypanosomiasis. Just like Suramin, Malarsoprol is basically only used to treat these pathogens on this image, at least for board exams and for real life situations. So if you see Malarsoprol, think immediately about African trypanosomiasis. Now there was also this large protein drink sitting on the table. These guards can't just live off syrup and soda after all. They need some real sustenance in the form of protein. This spilling protein drink will help you remember that trypanosomes are protozoa. Protein, protozoa. Now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 15-year-old boy presents to a humanitarian outreach clinic in South Africa. His mother is speaking for him since the patient is poorly responsive. The mother states that she saw three red, unexplained wounds on his arms one week ago and did not think much of it at the time. He has had a fever for three days and recently complained of being really tired. This morning, he was barely arousable. On physical exam, the patient is somnolent. The three red wounds are ulcerated and presumed to be bite marks. The physician is concerned about a protozoan parasite penetrating the patient's central nervous system. The patient is admitted to a nearby hospital and administered malarsoprol. Which of the following is true regarding the most likely causal organism? A. Diagnosis is confirmed by the presence of cysts on a blood smear. B. Fever cessation indicates resolution of the disease. C. Mosquito eradication will not prevent disease transmission. D. The red wounds indicative of bite marks were likely painless. Now hopefully from the question stem you notice that this patient has African trypanosomiasis, or African sleeping sickness. He lives in Africa and he's somnolent. There are multiple pathogens that can cause somnolence, but the use of malarsoprol is a dead giveaway for this particular disease. Remember that malarsoprol and suramin are basically used only for African trypanosomiasis. And with this in mind, which of the following is true? That would be choice C. Mosquito eradication will not prevent disease transmission. After all, African trypanosomiasis is transmitted by tsetse flies, not mosquitoes. Recall these teeny flies here represent tsetse flies. Now choice A is wrong because diagnosis is confirmed with the presence of trypomastigotes on peripheral blood smear, not cysts. Remember the tripping goats, one of which lost its head which fell in a pool of its own blood? Now choice B is wrong because fevers can come and go in this disease because of the antigenic variation of the parasite. We represented this idea with all of those gems on that heat lamp. Finally, choice D is wrong because the tsetse flies create painful ulcers, not painless ones. Remember those red ulcers on those poor little kids? Those look really painful. And that should be all you need to know about African trypanosomiasis.